border communities. Sometimes you cannot distinguish between one country from the other, like you rightly said. So, the reduction is because of Nigeria's drop in productivity, because petrol is a production component, energy component. It's not for consumption. Also, begin to interrogate some of the narratives that drove the sentiments against us. What's up, guys? Is another episode of the Middle Ground Podcast. Uh, thank you to everybody. I hope you guys have been enjoying the barrage of episodes we've been dropping. And in case you don't know, it's once in two weeks, that's it's fortnight, every Thursday. Just watch out for a new episode uh, to be dropping on our YouTube page. If you have not subscribed, please go subscribe, like, share our videos, comment also. If you, if you also want to dislike, you can go ahead and dislike it. Uh, so, this week, or on this episode, I don't have curves. Yes, curves is absent on this episode. But I have some distinguished gentlemen. Now, it's not boys only episode, but I just happen to have only boys or men on set with me. Uh, let's start like this. Um, I have Dr. Dahiru Majid. Um, he's a newspaper columnist, an author, public affairs analyst, and the lead team, the tech team lead of Look, Looks Terra Leadership Foundation. That's L U X T E R A Leadership Foundation here in Abuja. In case you want to look, uh, look up what uh, Dr. Majid have been doing. Dr. Majid, how are you doing? Doing very well. So, um, how is Luxterra Leadership Foundation? We're fine. We've been doing the same thing over and over again for the past 11 years. Okay, yes. okay. So, I think for people that just um, hear you on different media platforms, yes, they, they agree that ah, Dr. Majid Sabi. <laughs> they, <laughs> they will always say Dr. Majid Sabi, but the thing is this. They don't really know what, what's Luxterra uh, leadership Foundation about? Okay, Luke Stella Leadership Foundation was set up by Reverend Father George Ebusani. Hmm. Uh, he's a um, well known uh, Catholic uh, priest. Hmm. And uh, he has set up this foundation to help promote the ideals of good governance, good hmm. democratic governance, mm -hmm. integrity hmm. in society, peaceful coexistence, national integration, and all my elements of nation building, really. So what Lucera does is, from time to time, we identify certain projects that are relevant to this mm -hmm. uh, aim. Of that aim, building. building. And so we segment it and we run it for a number of years. So right now we are running a program on integrity uh, through an approach that seeks to build integrity from bottom to top, so that people themselves will only will take ownership <coughs> of the ideas of integrity, so as to have a corruption free society. Mm. that can allow for development and growth in Nigeria. Mm. And in this particular instance, we are using religious groups, Christian, Muslim, youth, clergy, all of the different components of both religious divides. We are bringing them in groups under one roof to use scriptural anecdotes to demonstrate that look, integrity is at the core of our respective faith, either as Muslims or Christians. As Christians. And it's only that we must internalize as a matter of people that are believers so as to have it as you know part of our everyday undertaking because really if you do not build the society from the top from the bottom to the top uh, it, it will be difficult to actually have a sanitized society so all efforts uh, are in place to make Nigeria a better place through human activities will be on the wow wow so on the lighter side Dr. Majid, yes. you mentioned all the major faiths. You mentioned Christianity, Islam, but it seems... Like we are, we are excluded. Yes, you are excluding <laughs> our own you as, know, as original faiths. As a matter of fact, I took a session last week 
when I interacted with some group of youth coppers mm. from both the Muslim and the Christian divide together mm. in a group. Mm. And I actually, actually told them that, look, whatever ideal you see in Christianity or Islam is actually embedded in traditional African religion too. Mm. The Ten Commandments, for example, may not be in the same form in the Quran as it is in the Bible, mm -hmm. but every aspect of the Ten Commandments, every of the commandments is also consistent with the, do, with the taboos and the abominations in traditional African religion. religious groups. So it is simply the same. It is the same thing that runs through. So we may not have brought a traditional worshippers under a roof like these other two groups, but we acknowledge the fact that, look, our traditional, uh, traditional um, religious groups too have the same ideals as Christianity and Islam when it comes to integrity and putting humanity at the core of religion. Hmm. Okay. All right. So I guess one of these days we'll go in depth into that. But I don't only have Dr. Majid on set. I also have. So when I met this man, I asked him, what should I call him? Is it Chief? <laughs> Alaji <laughs> Malam, <laughs> Doctor, <laughs> Professor. He said, just call me by my name. Muktao Halilu Modibo. And so I'm going to describe Muktao Halilu Modibo in one word. So that just captures everything that he is. Follow the money. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> please, where is the money? <laughs> where let's, is the money? Let's follow it. Uh, you, know, you, know, you, know, you know, when people talk about this, I had a conversation with um, um, a pastor in, in, in Nairobi, Kenya in 2000 and 2022, by the way. He said, um, Mukhtar, I was told in your profile that um, you, you lead the project that is called Follow the Money. What do you follow? Why won't you follow Jesus? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, sir, what we're following is actually the route to follow Jesus. Exactly. Because what we're doing is looking at um, social accountability, yes. looking at tracking government spendings, international aid spendings. But we are, we are tailoring and looking at people in the marginalized communities yes. to give them voice. You know, look at their basic education, look at their basic health, look at sanitation and hygiene, and sort of see how we can give them back to have ownership. So you see, in, in such a way, you know, we're doing, we're following Jesus. And he was like, <laughs> and he was like you know, um, um, I would have loved you to say something. And I said, uh, sir, Karl Marx said, and Abdraman Ibn Khaldun followed by saying, God forbid a day a man will lack what to say and God forbid that day that he will know everything. So <laughs> you said something. I, I'm, I'm sure I never lack what to say, <laughs> but uh, I don't know everything. So, so, so that's, that's, that's well, everything. Well, your, 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 your area of specialization really is following the money. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And mm. that means accountability... Uh, mm. good governance is mm. part of what you deal in yeah. or deal with yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Yes, yes. Wow, yes. that's great. And let me add that um, Mukhtar Halilu Modibo is a seasoned governance, transparency, and accountability expert with profound history with marginalized uh, communities, not only in Nigeria, but across Africa. Good job. Yeah. Um, but normal people don't do that. Uh, well, so the thing is, everybody is unique in, in their, their own, own way. Yes. So I don't think anybody is actually normal. Um. Normal is is normal is the um, sorry, pause. Please help me tell whoever it is. I beg, they should stop. Oh yeah, we are going. No, don't pause. Don't pause. Just don't stop it. Don't stop it. Just leave it. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Okay. So normal is what um, I think is relative. Is relative. Really. We just use it to um, kind of so so that you can give something a proper meaning, yes. a, a proper description. You say something is normal. Nobody is normal. Everybody is in one way or the other special in their own way. So your own specialty is following the money. Yeah. How many have you found? So, so, so you know, you know, one unique thing about governance in Africa is sort of um, if you look at how we we have our own dynamics of governance, and over time, I I, I will have to say, meeting Doctor here, mm. I his name sounds 
ring bell in my head because I know I I have been a very good lover of their their work. Um, I attended two of their events. Um, Inya, who works with them, used used to be our great fan, you know. And then she's a mother, so whenever mm. she has anything, she do call me to come. But there's a there's a direction that they do take that I fancy, but we don't take that kind of direction. Now, direction in trying to get people to understand that there is a thing that keeps us together. Um, I believe that there are five things that keep us running, mm. right? Legitimacy, credibility, accountability, service, and power, right? Now, one of the things they try to create is that legitimacy and, and credibility. So one of the things we actually try to uh, portray in governance is around um, um, service, holding accountable, right, and then power. So if you look at Africa, over time we, we try to um, create follow the money as a movement, not an organization. So if you go to Kenya, there is follow the money, but what they do is not like what we do in Nigeria. What they do in Kenya is they track um, funds that has to do with slump and international aid. Right? If you go to Gambia, what they do is budgetary allocation, um, um, cities, creating citizen budget and what have you. If you go to Cameroon, what they do is gender responsive public service, trying to track issues that has to do with gender budgeting uh, uh, and what have you. If you go to Keep Verde, they are doing gender responsive public services. If you come to Nigeria, one of the things we do is um, trying to look at how we can track basic education, basic health, water and sanitation and, and other things. So over time, one unique thing about um, um, what we have been doing is that incubation of peer-to-peer -peer learning. In all these countries, we have a founder, but I lead the, the entire country. And the very thing I always tell people, the unique thing is, as a secretary general of Follow the Money, I relate with the 36 state chapter leads in Nigeria and 11 countries that are under me. None of them None of them are younger than I am. All of them are older than I am. Wow. So one thing we try to establish here is building that legitimacy in leadership, building that credibility to have sense of sensibility to, to, to be held accountable, provide service, as well as divide the power. Understanding power is power with power over and, and, and what have you. So over time, we, there were a lot of challenges. There are still a lot of challenges from lack of trust between people and government to um, issues of um, lack of data, aggregated data in, 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 in the continent. Let me not just say mm. continent. And then we keep advancing into building a structural framework so that we can be able to build um, what is called optimal institutional performance among uh, people so that we can have integral human development like what they are doing um, in, 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 in Luz Terra. Mm. Yeah. That's that's great. So you see, I have two guys that are already making great impact. So let's make more impact, guys, shall we? Okay. Yeah, we okay. So let's talk about something that um, kind of. Okay, I'm, I'm going to speak from my own perspective because yeah. I, I I really don't know as much as you guys do. Yeah. But the issue of bricks, mm. you know. When this new administration came in, there was news that <laughs> he's already laughing. <laughs> Excuse yeah. me. When this new administration came in, we heard that uh, Nigeria has been ditched from BRICS. Mm. And um, okay, so you know, some people are natural pessimists. Mm. Um, there was this story in town that ah. It's because of the illegitimate government. That's why the body uh, just decided to ditch Nigeria or because they, were, they didn't like what happened during the election, etc., etc. This, that, this, that, this, that. There was a lot of things. So now, like you said, mm. normal, normal me. Mm. So if everybody's going this way, I'm going that way. Mm. So the question is, wait, what's really special about this brace? So I, I started looking into it and... Mm. I saw that, oh, there is actually some, there, 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 there is something in there. Let me put it that way. There there is some, is, but have you seen it? Well, there is something in bricks. Mm. And let me tell you the thing that I have seen. Seen. Okay. 
economically, it seems the 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 the, the people, the <laughs> members of <laughs> the members of BRICS, yeah. economically, I, I think they are a little bit more mm, stable. Stable and no, so I'm, I won't say the individual economy of these states are stable, mm. but together. Mm. The body mm. is kind of stable because they already know who the superpower is. Mm. They know who you shouldn't mess with. Mm. They know who you run to for arms, mm. for economic. Mm. For, so, I mean, if you ask me, I think they are more stable than the Commonwealth. Uh, yeah. I think so. Okay. So, I think they are more stable okay. than the Commonwealth. I, but I, I really don't want to wait for you to finish this Okay, question. please, go ahead. What do you do know you why I said I don't want to wait for you to finish the question me. is... I mean, you know, one of the first things you, you started mentioning is mm. the issue of um, issues of trust and legitimacy in governance, right? So when you wake up in a country that a lot of people don't trust system and don't believe in the legitimate act of the system, now, one thing that will cook is fake news, disinformation and misinformation, mm. right? Mm. So why is that thriving? Because people don't believe in the legitimacy and people don't believe, um, don't trust the system. Mm. Now, I'll give you, let's track it back to 2000, 2001, mm. when the issue of BRIC started, before the S was added, that's mm. South Africa, yeah. right? There's someone <laughs> called Lord Newell. I, I'm, I don't know, maybe I've pronounced his name well, but um, he was the one that started issues of coining that name from Brazil, China, um, I think Russia um, and who was the I um, that, 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 that made it that. So before, that is before South Africa joined in 2009, mm. right? Now, these are people that sort of feel that they contribute some certain percentage of the world, like 40% uh, of the world is, is their country because of the China, the Brazil, and some other countries you get. Now, the conversation is around um, issues that has to do with um, context of um, um, economy, trying to stabilize their own economy, trying to know that G7 has nothing to do um, on them, right? Yeah. But if you come to Nigeria, I want you to be specific. We, uh, we live in a country where you and I, right, don't run Nigerian economy. Do you know why we don't run Nigerian economy? Wow. I can afford a 3,000, 5,000 Naira food. You can afford that. Our economy is being run by people that sell normal grass at uh, 20 Naira, 30 Naira um, um, point. That's how I, our economy is being run. And I'll borrow the words of um, 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 the learned Falana that says we are trying to think around uh, dollarizing Nigeria, right? If you go back to a lot of treaties that we have been formed, we form part of from the Geneva to Abuja declaration on on, on, on health to UNESCO declaration on education, none of them, none of them over time we, have we met that particular thing. So on the issue of, you know, legitimacy around BRICS, the, the president of South Africa, that's Ramaphosa, decided to invite Nigeria because Nigeria has a new government and he thinks Nigeria is trying to create a pathway for the economy of the country and that's why they were invited. It's BRICS important for Nigeria. To me, if you ask me, we're trying to stabilize. We are not trying to be strong. We only have the large population, right, that we cannot opt and say, yes, this is the population. <coughs> but we're trying to stabilize our economy to be strong. And then a lot of people are joining. The same lot all that started that name in 2001 mm. coming to 2009 Last month, one of the things he was quoted by um, London Financial Times to say is, if the BRICS continue with their own agenda, their own controversy, mm. one, will they want to have one uniform um, money, right? Currency. A currency. One uniform currency that will beat the dollar, right? So the question is, will they get their own IMF? That's his question. Will they get their own central bank? Now, they have a bank that they support. It's in Shanghai or something. It's in China that that is what they recognize. But will they agree for that point of having to have one form of currency to run? So why will we want to put ourselves in controversies, right? The controversies of big men trying to do big things. When well, we are we, big. Yes, we are you know, big. You know, but you know, some I, people, I'm, some I'm people trying will say... To, 
I, I understand where you're going, <laughs> but what I'm trying to tell you is, can we settle our economy to be on a normal pathway that is running well? We'll have a good form of education. We have a, 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 a framework on our health sector that that will cut off um the 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 the, the issue of people um going out and going in and let me give you the last thing i will say I, i'm sure doctor have a lot of things to say <laughs> but i'll tell you this thing there is a syndrome that we all need to study the japa and the sapa syndrome it's a real thing that is being named people are studying it but you need to understand that a lot of people are leaving the country to go to other countries to build what I said earlier, integral human development and optimal institutional performance. So if we don't do that, joining that kind of um, theme, yeah, to, to be controversial when we still need aid, one of the best, our health, our health sector is being driven by, by the aid we get. Our education is being driven by that. Our the humanitarian world is being driven by that in this country. So why do we have to be in that kind of shoes when there are other things for us to deliberate on? You get, I'm, I'm sure when we keep going, I, I, I really want to always talk about problems and solution, right? But... When we'll we get, we'll get into the yeah. solutions. Yeah, and I think that, I think solutions is better because rather I than believe there's always kind of a thing. pathway through all this. Yes, things. yes. Doctor Majid, mm. oh yeah, give us an overview. I know your overview will, will always be interesting. I, I think I I agree with um, my brother Modibo. What I understand him to be saying is simple. There are some internal work to be done by Nigeria before you think about joining a group like BRICS. And again, Nigeria was Nigeria didn't actually apply to join BRICS. They were just Nigeria invited. was simply invited to attend and we've not applied to join BRICS. But uh, do you think we should apply? Well, let's continue. I, in, BRICS, in your answer, we would know. You see, BRICS, can not, for BRICS as a group mm. didn't develop the member nations. It's important we understand this. These countries are already fast developing emerging economic powerhouses when they were identified, like you said, by a Goldman Sachs economist, to say, look, these, five con these four countries, so at that time, South Africa was not among them, four countries, mm. uh, Brazil, Russia, India, and China, will dominate the world economy by 2050. It was a projection. Yeah. And that these countries are countries to be watched out for. Yeah. If you recall, between 1945 and 2001, the global economy was, the, was dominated by what you call the global north. Yeah. Countries mostly from the northern hemisphere that are industrialized, or these countries include the United States of America, Britain, most of Europe, Japan, South Korea. They dominated the world economy. But suddenly we saw what used to be the global south, not yeah. geographically speaking, though, but in terms of economic development. So countries like China and India Imagine forcefully as export competitive economies growing rapidly. And so by 2001, the world has recognized the feat achieved by these countries over time and had projected that these countries are going to go places. So essentially it was to first explore investment opportunities in those countries and other economic collaborations. That was what it was. But when they were identified, I think they now realized themselves as, look, so we have been identified as Coming up, why can't we come together now mm. and see if we can use our strength to protect ourselves more? So it's a coming together of thriving economies, yeah. developed Econ economies. It's not a Father Christmas organization. <laughs> Fine, that that's a the struggling answer. economy like Nigeria should stick oh, to Almost really every hit combo, not a Father. <laughs> yes, it's not really. Yes, yes. They are there to challenge the G seven, really, essentially. Yeah, and there is geopolitics there too because Russia is having a global ambition too, to rival the United States of America mm. as a successor state to the defunct Soviet Union. So you see, BRICS is also having some political, you know, a side to his activities as well as economic. So essentially what BRICS is all about right now is to protect themselves as much as they can. So yes, they floated a new development bank, which is something that is close to what you have in the IMF, yeah. to support themselves. Mm. Yes. And so they also have a reserve arrangement that seeks to support their foreign exchange demands in terms of volatility, 
for themselves. Because they're going mm -hmm. to contribute to that pool and help themselves. So the question is, if you look at what the, the BRICS country represents today, BRICS, South Africa inclusive, they represent 28% of the global GDP, nominal GDP, mm -hmm. at $27 trillion. Mm -hmm. So what's Nigeria's GDP? Less than $500 billion. <laughs> Now, these same countries, collectively, they are holding 4.5 trillion in USD reserves, collectively. Yeah. It might interest you to know that China, for example, alone, has a USD reserve of about 3.1 trillion era, higher than the United States. Mm. You know what that means? China has more dollars than the United States of America, where dollars is printed. <laughs> not only, it's not only China. India has more dollars in its reserve than the United States, another big country. The same thing with Brazil. Brazil has more dollars in its reserve than the United States of America. So are all these, are, sorry, sorry to cut you, uh, Dr. Martin. And Russia. <laughs> so you see what I'm saying? It's only South Africa that does not have more reserve than the United States. I'm trying to benchmark this country with the United States in terms of dollar reserves. Hmm. What is Nigeria's reserve recently? We've been told it's less than $5 billion. That is what we have been told. Exactly. Not that that's the reality. What it is. Yeah. Uh, so, so. Meaning that we're not even in this category. Mm. And so these countries are simply trying to help themselves. And so if you look at the countries they've admitted, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, these are countries that are on an upward trajectory for economic development. Yeah. So they're not, they are not, a, they are not, it's not a charity organization really. So the question of joining BRICS or not shouldn't have a really a reason in the first place. Rather, what, we should do what Modi boy is saying. What do we do to become a China, to become an India, to become a Brazil, to become a Russia? That was identified long time ago that these people are going to go places. Mm. And indeed, between 2001 and 2023, they've really gone places. Yeah. As you can see the statistics. So truly, if, the, if this trajectory continues, by 2050, really, BRICS countries are likely to dominate world economy. Because in Africa, for example, South Africa is a leading economy in Africa yeah. in terms of export competitiveness. Mm. We mm. have a larger nominal GDP, but South Africa has something we don't have in terms of export earnings because of their aggressive export competitiveness. Egypt is another economic powerhouse in, Nigeria, in Africa. Mm. And so if you look at the countries that have been identified today to join uh, BRICS, there's something they have to offer. There's something. Ethiopia might not be such a traveling economy, but they've been able to do one thing in one sector. Yeah. They are an aviation powerhouse. That's something everybody bringing to the table. Hmm. Yes. Everybody, so, mu you, as in, you must have a reason yes. for being there. Because yeah. essentially, it's not, it's not must contribute. Because essentially, these countries are still char characterized or, should I say, designated as developing countries. Yeah. None of the BRICS countries are actually developed, developed. countries. Mm. Mm. They are still considered developing. And all of the BRICS countries are members of the G20 the group of 20 largest economies together with the G7 countries. So these guys are doing well in themselves. They're only coming together to protect themselves, to do more, to do better. So the question is, what exactly is Nigeria going to offer China that we are so interpreted to we take almost every facility away from China to do basic infrastructure? What exactly are we going to be sitting on the table with China as equals? What exactly are we going to be doing there? Okay, so let, let you see... <coughs> And this is very, very interesting. I never saw it from this point of view. I, I never... No, you only seen it from the, <laughs> the, the president was invited and something, well, well, something good is there and then we yeah, were not allowed to be part of it. But obviously, something good is there. It's not as if something you have good to be, is not there. You have to be it's good. Of, you, you know what you know I the said? Same sorry. Good. You have to you be know, good. You know what I said? <laughs> to to get that um, something good there. Do, 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 doctor, you know, one, one of the things I said is these people are looking at optimal institutional performance right so you have to be performing in one certain level yes right for them to say okay come we might lack this and that will stop some of our growth and strengthen yeah so come and strengthen this yes. so that we can move so what are you contributing now? so what are you contributing are you, we have natural resources uh, what are we doing with our natural resources it's just potentials you see, well, so, <laughs> I mean, everything is a potential. The thing until is, when you, you, ha you, have, really to do, you have to do certain things for yourselves first. So right now, we can still get loans from World Bank yeah. to do palliatives. 
The new development bank in Shanghai is not going to give you money for palliatives. Do you see? That's the thing. Hmm. And so that's why the new development bank has not been able to supplant IMF influence in the world. Because as long as you have more countries like Nigeria in existence that needs help, that needs aid, that need grants and all forms of donations, mm. Mm. the West will still be relevant. Mm. And in any case, it will be a tall order to displace the dollar as a means of international or a medium of international exchange globally. You know why? Why? You see, people don't understand the hold that America is having on the world economy. After the Second World War, it mm. was America's Marshall Plan and strategic investment in the economies of the western parts of Europe, as well as Southeast Asia, including Japan, and even China, India inclusive, that actually spurred development globally. So essentially, the economic growth, development, and trajectory that we've seen in this one of these BRIC countries, we are ab initial investments from America in dollar terms. And they need dollars continuously to replenish their investments and remain relevant. And that is why they've told you severally that they are not really planning to supplant IMF or replacing dollar with any other form of currency. It's not something that is realistic. Mm. And so even when they, when they have created their own reserves, joint reserves to stabilize their respective central banks, it is still dollar denominated. The loans are going to give you through their new development bank is dollar denominated. Because even China needs more dollars than <laughs> yuan, its own local currency. The same thing with India. The same thing with Russia, Brazil and, Russia. and Brazil. And so what we are saying in essence is there are no easy ways to success. We need to do what these countries have done. That has made India, a former colony of the United Kingdom, mm. to have displaced UK as the fifth Lion, largest, economy, uh, in the largest world. economy in the world. And what has made China, a country that was humiliated for most part of the early 20th century, China didn't emerge forcefully until the 70s. For China to have gone ahead of Japan and is almost equal in America in terms of dominance in economic activities globally, we need to look at what these countries have done and apply them at home. And some of these things include accountability. Hmm. Yes. You have to pass that level Accountability. of palliative, um, giving governors loan to, to, to buy maize and give people yes. across. There has to be real development and we need to roll up our sleeves and do it the way others have done it before us. So we can't just jump into a club of countries that are already, already somewhere and simply seeking to protect themselves and have more strategic engagement with G7 rivals for a greater share of global economic dominance. What are you taking there? What are you really offering? And, and doctor, if, if, if you maybe talk, talk about what we suffered from the issue of uh, Paris Club and London Club. Yes. It's something closely like this. Group of businessmen just put together some resources and now other countries like Nigeria, states, federal government, everybody is going there to collect loan. And that was the loan that really suffered us that, um, exactly. you know, at some point, Obasanjo had to, uh, President Obasanjo, as he then was then, had to help us settle some state um, yes. um, loans and stuff like that. So I think, I think there are better, what we're just saying, right? I think there are better things Nigeria could have really focused themselves into. Like if you look at the conversation uh, Mr. President had in, um, in India, with the group of ministers he went um, to India with. And the Minister of um, Digital Economy and Communication is already advancing a uh, conversation around the AI technology. And then um, Minister of Foreign Affairs is talking about issues of um, that foreign foreign policy that would speak to um, going to India on, on um, visa on arrival and stuff like that. I think these are things that we need to focus on as a new government, as we have a new government to create pathway because our economy has been something else. I know Wale Odun, who is the coordinating minister of finance, mm. um, economy, said mm. something that the economy has been redundant for years, right? For that economy to come back to that stable uh, uh, form, right where you will see a lot of um um things developing it's it's a it will go a long way okay okay so for the benefit of those that don't understand economic redundancy mm. you know we can easily um, identify with human redundancy mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. you're at work but you are not productive mm -hmm. so how 
Is it that an economy can be redundant? So let me give you an instance. I said it earlier that myself and you and possibly doctor, we don't run Nigerian economy, right? Mm -hmm. Why did I say we don't run Nigerian economy? Let me give you a trajectory that the previous administration did. Um, to see ourselves, you know, coming out of recession or stabilizing economically, mm -hmm. right? There were a lot of resources being injected into um, the economy, and still the economy did not thrive. I'll give you an example, a simple Lehman example. You go to Kano, or let me use my state, you go to Adama State, there is a, 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 an animal market or a, one of the largest cow market in the state, right? But in that state, Part of Nigeria, right, don't believe in the banking sector. Some level of people don't believe in the banking sector, while some level of people in the other part of the country believe in the banking sector. So you go to a village in, in Adama State where um, 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 an Igbo brother is selling um, wood, is selling, is selling ceiling, is mm. selling um, car spare part and everything. Immediately they pay salaries or oh, these guys sell their cows and everything. They, they might have collected ceiling, block, cement and all. They take the money back to him. Right? Mm. And then immediately that money is submitted to him. What will he put? He has collected from Lagos, Aba, where, where, where. He'll mm. put the money back and then send it to the through banking sector to those people, right? While those people that sell the cows and everything, you might go to a house and meet someone with six million, Bags. right? Or hundred million <clears throat> in his house without taking it to the banking sector. So how will the economy benefit from the money that this very person have, right? And then there are people, there are people that are roaming the street and what they sell and get is maybe 20, 30 naira. When there was that issue of uh, um, uh, um, Naira, uh, Naira redesign. redesign and stuff, I was in a village in Sokoto, Sabon, Birni, to take a training. Someone, immediately after the training, he met me. He said he has over 600,000. That's the only thing he has. He has never opened a bank account. And, and he has been a businessman for all his life. And his family has been business. Like, so I was shown, someone, I was told that this person have over 150 million. But wow. the money has not been in the banking hall. So the money that is there is being... So that redundancy of the economy is, one, there have been a lot of issues in Nigeria that other people from outside um, 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 this country will not mm. come in. Because mm. as an investor now, let's assume doctor is coming as an investor. The first thing he is looking for in Nigeria, one, will government policy affect my business? Because... Go, go Kada, something like that. Mm -hmm. Government policy affected his business in Lagos. Will my business be looted? Even the shop right here in Lugbe have been looted, right? I remember, yeah, during you, the whole you, xenophobia you, issue. You, you, you get the point. Or will I be kidnapped mm. if I am here doing the business? So you see, these are issues that have affected our economy. Now, coming back to the fact that we, we just came out of recession, right? The economy has not been thriving the way is expected. And then the economy is being run by small and medium enterprises that the government is not really looking at the, 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 what, what, what they are doing. I think it's just last year, um, <coughs> last, during the ending time of President Muhammad Dubari, Dubari, that's when we had uh, the policy around the SME. Small and medium enterprises being passed as a, 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 as a law, right? So now, if we come back, guess how we are running our economy and we want to join the BRICS? Federal government is giving state government palliative of 5 billion. 48%, I think, 48% is loan mm -hmm. or, or um, some certain yeah. percentage are grants. are grants. And then the point is, we, I don't know how we got that to 2 billion to give the state, yeah? But what are the states doing? They are buying maize, they are buying um, um, rice and what have you to give people so that people can go and eat. If it is a bag of rice and four people are in the house, they will eat that bag of rice for, let's say, a month. It's gone. Will you go back to that? And then when you go back to the education so uh, sector, where you can, be, you can um, um, uh, understand that if I tell you, one of the only things we are trying to do to revitalize our education sector is by creating the school loan. The student loan. The student loan. But let me give you the impact of that student loan. One, if in your house there is no 
lawyer that has 10 years post call service or there is no lawyer that can stand in for you that has 10 years post call service automatically you are gone you will not get that loan <laughs> if your mom or your dad in any way yeah has done something around around what do you call it around maybe um did not pay loan for some certain okay. period of time automatically you will not get that that so which thing. means if and you are owing Fantastic. <laughs> to see a VC, to see a VC in Nigeria, a VC of a public university is like a president. And the VC must have to sign on okay. that thing before you get that, <laughs> that, that, that thing. And guess what? They said immediately after school, two years after school, that's when the repayment plan is, is due. I know two someone years. that is four years, like he has graduated four years and he don't have a job. So the reality is, right, for me, I don't want us to go far. Our economy is an economy that can be emerging, right? If we will Lulu look at what is happening to the economy and the government is ready to create pathway for the economy, not really regulate the economy or not really make it look like it's something else. If you look at the kind of policies government are bringing from the kind of ministries they are creating and issues of cost of governance, that might affect us. But creating ministries like environment and ecological, whatever, is a good thing. Having a ministry of uh, marine and blue economy. I know a lot of people laughed about it, but it's a good thing because a lot of times that people are looking at something like that. And then having people from private sector, civil society organization, and uh, people that have been doing some sort of things, you know, um, in the system, mm. coming into the system to bring their own ideology is another thing. We have to think like we are in the 21st century for us to thrive. Nobody will give you free money. I'm, I'm sure them doctor, they give you free <laughs> knowledge of leadership. But meet me to say, come and tell me something about this. I'll give you invoice. So that, that's how that Brexit is. You get the first thing that is if Nigeria is Thank applying God we don't to have come, money. <laughs> yes, if Nigeria is saying we're applying to come and join, what is Nigeria going to tell them? Are we going to tell them that we have a gold in Zamfara and we have petrol in in, in, in the Niger Delta region, we cannot tell them that because they are, the world is outgrowing, um, um, what do you call it? The world is outgrowing petrol. Petrol, of course. You get, Saudi Arabia has petrol, but guess what Saudi Arabia is investing their money? AI and sports, football. Those Cristiano Ronaldo and God that you see people buying, that's you think a, they are just buying they them up, for, They messed for, up for this uh, summer, summer transfers by... They just, anyway, they helped Chelsea. So they know, they know what they are doing mm. because that is the projection. That is the focus of the world. That's the future. You get. Till today, we cannot tell the number of people we have in Nigeria. Our borders lack integrity. We lack integrity in our system. Our, everything about Nigeria, you get. There is a one way wobbly, or the other. Wobbly, wobbly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but the thing is, to be honest, as a citizen today, I have never lost um, focus or lost interest oh. or hope in the country. I feel that the problem we've had before of the good people thinking that politics is, is a dirty game being run by dirty-minded people are the ones that put us into this. The more we get people that understand the system and have integrity, right? Over time, the number of people that doctor... Um, 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 is helping to build their capacity on leadership, mm. integrity, and using religion. I bet you will get to a stage where there are the people that are remaining. What will we have? We'll have a solid system. The only thing is we are running, but we are not running the way we supposed to run, <laughs> right? But I think we can, we can, we can, we can achieve that you thing know, we want to you achieve. Know, you know, when you spoke about blue economy, mm. for when I heard it, the first thing that came to my mind is. I mean, Nigeria won't start. They do, <laughs> won't start. Or they do jet skiing. <laughs> you know, people will pay for jet skiing and come and ski, and they pay, and you know, and it's it's good money. But okay, so, doctor, I'm going to come to you, and don't don't let us lose sight of what we are talking about. It's about risks, and we've all agreed here that we are we we don't belong belong in that WhatsApp group. And the reason why we don't belong in that WhatsApp group is because our economy is not nothing to write home about. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, Doc, moving ahead now, let's let's 
let me just think for the nation Nigeria and say, you know what? See these Greeks, we'll join it. The people we join now, they don't get two heads. What are those things that we should start paying attention to? Now, I know because of your background, you're going to talk about integrity, you're going to talk about good leadership and everything, but let's talk practical terms. Let's talk, what should we do? What are those things that we should first do to our education, health, and those important pointers that will take us from where we are, right there, economically speaking, to somewhere that would make the British people to do like this. Like, wow, Nigeria, oh, you guys are doing well. What are those things?